Hello everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to the market now as of about 10.30 a.m. on Friday, May 27th. Before we get started, I'd like to wish everyone a very happy and safe Memorial Day. Wall Street opened little change today as cautious investors braced for a speech by Fed Chair Janet Yellen for clues on timing of a U.S. interest rate hike and that that uh, speech is due this afternoon about 1.15 p.m. Eastern. She is due to speak at an event hosted by Harvard, U Harvard University. Her speech comes after a number of Fed policymakers this week. Uh, most of them struck hawkish tones on the trajectory or the movement up of interest rates and what they're going to do. Investors have grown more comfortable with expectations that the central bank could raise rates as soon as June with many taking the view that such a hike would reflect improvement in the country's economy. Of course, there are lots of arguments on both sides for this. Okay, now let's look at three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, as we usually do, we're going to look at a chart of the S&P 500 uh, ETF, the SPY, but we're going to look at a monthly chart, and I think we're, we, we really need to do that right now because, after all, this is the end of the month of May. Today's candle over here on the hard right edge will show us exactly how May ended. And because, as I've told you before, when we look at the longer view, the longer-term view of the market and of charts, we tend to see things that we really can't see on a daily chart. So we're looking at this monthly chart of the S&P 500 spider, the SPY. And when we hear, uh, when we hear analysts talking about how we're trading in a range, it's really easy to see right here. Now when I captured this chart today, <clears throat> this morning, the SPY was trading at $209.78 or about 2097 on the S&P 500 itself. Uh, it's had resistance here at 2095, and as you may remember, our all-time high back in May of 2015 was $213.78. That was right back here. So if we translate that into SPY, we can say, uh, or the S&P 500, we can say it made a high at 2137. At any way, for the SPY, if we want to make it easy here, we can say that it definitely has strong resistance from uh, right, right around 20, uh, 210 or $211, right up at 2100. Um, where the, the last high, the, the all-time high was made. And you can see how it's been moving down. It moved down in 2015 almost to 180 or 1800 on the S&P 500 index. Then we can see how it moved back up here on this monthly chart. Then we see that in January of this year, it came down, and most of us remember this pretty vividly, it came down and retested this prior low of, of um, spring of last year. And then in February, it came down and tested it again. So what it's telling us is that at least up till now, and maybe for a long time, there are buyers down at this 1800, 1810 level, uh, or 180, 181 on the SPY. There's buyers down here who come in and buy. And so this range that we're trading in from 181, say, up to 210, that's the range we've been going back and forth in. It bounced off that low in February and moved right back up. So now the trick is, do we have enough uh, good news? Do we have solid enough earnings? Because after all, that's a big portion of what drives the S&P. Uh, and, and our markets. Do we have enough good earnings? Do we have enough growth in the U.S. and global growth to keep this index, this big benchmark, moving up and over 210 this summer, or do we not? Does it come back down and trade in a range, or does it get 
even weaker and fall below, say, this 180 mark. And I put the red line here because that's really our line in the sand. Uh, if it falls below that, we know we've got probably pretty sure we've got more pain to go. Now, on this chart, I have plotted the 12-month moving average. <coughs> Excuse me, it's a tight moving average. But you can see how well it works. And as long as the SPY stays above, above our 12-month moving average, then we can pretty much exhale. Should it move below that, we really need to pay attention to our positions. And, and then, of course, if it moves down to below 180, excuse me, we really, really need to keep an eye on our positions and maybe take some profits. Okay, so let's keep an eye on that as we move into the summer months. Next, we'll look at a daily chart, as we usually do, of the iShares Russell 2000 ETF. The IWM is the symbol. This is the daily chart again, and this IWM, we watch it because it can act as a leading indicator for our broader markets. Now, today when I captured this chart, the IWM was trading at $114.30. Back up, actually retesting the highs here, uh, the April high of $115.05. So, Right, the uh, the IWM looks bullish here right now. It is trading at quite a premium above its 20-day, 50-day, and 200-day moving averages that are all coming in right together right now. So we want to see if they fan out and move higher. Of course, they're lagging indicators, but that will indicate their strength in the IWM if it can move up and over 115 and keep going, that will be positive for the broader market, of course, as well as small caps. If it has to stop here in the next few days, come back and take a breather, we want to make sure it stays above the 50 and 200 day moving averages coming in here at 111. Of course, we have nearby support at 108. Should it fall below that, that's cautionary. If it falls below, uh, this, this, these lows in March of about 106 down to 104. Then, as we did with the SPY, if it moves below 180, uh, if the IWM moves below 106, we need to become very defensive. And finally, our chart, last chart for the day, uh, many, many um, industry groups and sectors are oversold right now, are overbought, excuse me, overbought right now, meaning they're trading near their highs and a little bit euphoric. So I'm looking for something that isn't euphoric. And I came upon the Vanek Vectors uh, Pharmaceutical ETF, symbol PPH. This looks like it could be making a low base here. I'm uh, watching as the PPH has come down, uh, made its lows here, so far at least, in February, right about just above 56. Those lows held. Again, there were buyers here when the PPH came back down to 56. It retested again here at the end of March, not quite, but almost, and then retested here in May. Now, the top components of the PPH are... Pfizer, Bristol-Myers, AbbVie, Merck, Johnson & Johnson. And the way this ETF is constructed, again, it looks as though it could be making a low base here. It does not trade enough shares during the day to day trade it. It would be something you'd plan to hold for the little longer term. The RSI is trending higher here, the 14-day RSI. The MACD uh, is coming up to the zero line, the MACD line, the black line looks like it wants to cross above the zero line, which I, it will if the PPH continues higher. Right now it's trading above its 50-day uh, simple moving average, its 20-day simple moving average, which is the red line. The black line, the 200-day moving average, is coming down from overhead, but it's up high enough that we don't need to worry about it right now. So the PPH is trading it today at $58.82. I'm going to watch it going into the beginning of next week. If our market as a whole can stay strong, 
I'm assuming the PPH can, of course, pharmaceuticals are slightly defensive, and I like that right now. So I'll keep an eye on the PPH and see if it can gain more momentum. Maybe if the market pulls back, it has to come back down to 58. But as long as it can stay above the 50-day moving average, the green line, if it can or if it has to pull back and then pop back up above it, that's when I'll keep an eye on it as a potential long position going into the summer. But keep in mind if it moves down underneath, uh, if it moves down below, say, $57.75, then uh, I won't want it at that time. I want it to stay above that line. Okay, uh, now we'll go on to next week's economic reports. But first, please join us this coming Tuesday. Tony's Market Club is usually held on Monday, but the market will be closed on Monday. So join us this coming Tuesday online from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Eastern for our next session of Tony's Market Club. We talk about which side of the market to trade. I give you a mini trading lesson. And then I'll give you stocks and ETFs that may become ripe for high potential trades. This is a low-priced, high-value opportunity to learn more about the market, become a better trader, and quite frankly, make more money. So please join us. Those who cannot attend our live session, there is not a problem. The recording of our session is available to all of our members just a few minutes after the session ends. And now for the coming week's economic reports. Of course, on Monday, the market is closed for the Memorial Day holiday. Tuesday, we have a, this week, we have a lot of economic uh, numbers cramped into the four-day week. Tuesday, we have PCE prices, the Case-Shiller 20-City Index, Chicago PMI, and Consumer Confidence. Wednesday, we have the ISM Index, that's monthly, auto and truck sales, and the Fed's Beige Book. Thursday, we have the ADP Employment Change. Jobless claims and crude inventories are a day late because of the holiday. And on Friday, we have what will really be watched here, the non-farm payrolls with the unemployment rate, as well as the ISM Services Index. Again, please join us for Tony's Market Club this coming Tuesday. Don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity to raise your trading knowledge and your trading profits. Have a happy Memorial Day. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.